Greetings ladies and gentlemen and fellow aviators, welcome back to the channel. I got a comment on my last video asking about what graphics settings I use, so that video, or correction, this video is dedicated to you. I also will link a graphics guide in the description, which I used also to set up my graphics settings that I currently use and it's just a very very detailed guide explaining what all the settings do, what impact they have, as well as screenshots alongside it so you can kind of compare what you want on what setting. So like I said that will be linked below but I will explain that maybe as we go along as well. So as we hop into our settings here we'll start off uh, display mode you'll want that on full screen, windowed is just not the way to go as far as I know exposure compensation, zero is set to neutral. Now full screen resolution, you're going to want to set that to your native uh, monitor resolution, which mine is 2560 by 1440. Anti-aliasing, want to put that on TAA, temporal anti-aliasing, which gives you the best quality as far as I know, but it does uh, obviously use a bit more of your graphics card or your performance. Um, but yeah, like I said, TAA will definitely give you the best quality as far as I know with a render scaling of 100%. If you use more than that, I'm pretty sure that, that does a massive hit on your VRAM, so on your FPS as well, which will degrade severely. So like I said, just leave this and this, I would say, at 100% or at 100. Now for max frame rate, um, here I would actually leave it off in the game. Now what I do is I do actually limit my max frame rate to give me smoother performance and a stable frame rate is um, what I do is I go to the NVIDIA control panel on my computer, go to Microsoft Flight Sim on I think it's the 3D uh, settings. Anyways once you get to Microsoft Flight Sim there I set my max frame rate to 75 which is my max monitor resolution. I thought it was 120 but it's actually 75 now I went in there, set it to 74 actually, so that I stay below that cap to keep a stable frame rate. Now what this does is my computer for instance with frame gen here as well can output like 120, 130 FPS while flying on the flight sim. But in reality I'm only seeing 75 if that's what my monitor can output so it makes no sense. Now if I set that max frame rate it keeps a stable frame rate in my opinion so yeah, if your computer can output 120 FPS, then it can definitely keep a stable 75 in my case, for instance. So I would set that max frame rate in the NVIDIA control panel to about one below what your monitor frame rate monitor frame rate is. And yeah, that way you get stable frames per second. And for me, it really doesn't make sense to have it higher because you're not seeing anything higher anyways. Now for frame gen. I have NVIDIA DLSS, which works the best for me, at a 2 times frames multiplier. AMD FSR3 I've tried, but as you can see here it also says that uh, it can cause crashes for some users on NVIDIA cards. I personally haven't experienced one, but I just this is I think the most commonly used one. Obviously if you have an RTX 40 series or higher, I would just use this. This works absolutely great. Now, V-Sync I, v I have off because I don't think that works in combination with frame gen. I, on my monitor, I do have, I think it's a free sync setting which I have on. That kind of helps tearing, I think. But I was experiencing pretty bad tearing before. But I will show you a setting below that I turned on that helps quite a bit. But I still do experience a little bit of tearing anyways. I'd rather use frame gen than just vsync because like I said, I don't think these two work in combination with each other. So I'd leave that off. Dynamic settings, here's a frame rate target. I have that off. What this does is, uh, as far as I'm concerned, if your frames drop below this frame rate target, it will start, the sim will start to uh, lower settings until you reach this target again. Now I had this on when flying into Frankfurt on Vatsim once and my FPS just wasn't having it while I had this on. So I don't think it really does that much, at least for me. So I just go ahead and leave that off. Um, because as I said, if you have that uh, frame rate, max frame rate, 
I am getting pretty stable FPS no matter what, so I would just leave that off. Now, I am very generous, no, not very generous, very grateful that I do have a very good computer as well, obviously. Um, my okay. specs, I'd have to go ahead and check that here real quick. Uh, here we go. Go ahead and check that. Uh, okay, yeah, so I have a uh, Ryzen 7 9700X with an RTX 5070 Ti, 16GB of VRAM, and 32GB uh, of RAM. So I'm very grateful to have a very good computer. Um, yeah. Which can handle these settings, but I obviously also did tweak my settings some because I don't have a NASA PC. So, and Flight Sim is very, very heavy on your computer, no matter what computer you have. Like I said, unless it's a NASA computer. So I did tweak around with my settings a bit. Um, I started out with the Ultra preset, and from there I kind of tweaked the settings. So terrain level of detail, I would leave that at 200, because if you go below that, you do notice a decrease in quality. But if you go above that, not really that much in my opinion, so that's why I leave that at 200. Now off screen terrain pre-caching. This is an important setting because what this does is it preloads, I guess, uh, objects and stuff outside of your f current viewing point. So let's say if you're looking straight for a while in the cockpit and then you decide to look around, if you experience some frame drops or some stuttering, then this is the setting I would mess with because this basically preloads that stuff off screen so that if you do look around that stuff's already loaded. So I would mess around with this setting. I had that on high previously. I'm just switched it to ultra as well to kind of just play around with it. Uh, displacement mapping, I have off. So yeah, not much more to say about that. Like I said, if you want in detail, definitely please check out that uh, in-depth guide that explains everything very, very well. So whoever did that put a lot of time and effort into it. Buildings, I have on ultra, trees ultra, plants ultra. Now with trees, I played around with this some, put it on high, put it on ultra not that much of a difference for me so I just stuck with ultra and it didn't really have a big performance impact either. Rocks I just have on high because yeah no real visual difference there for me. Um, grass I like my grass I have that on ultra <laughs> that's kind of my explanation for that. Objects level of detail I've got on 150 no real need for me to go above that this works very very well in my opinion. Now for volumetric clouds I have that on Ultra, and I can only recommend you have it on Ultra because clouds, massive part in flying, and when you're flying, for instance, I don't know, in the sunset, or when you're flying at any time of day, you want your clouds to look good. That just really changes the whole experience. So, I lower other any other settings, but not this one. I Although this is <laughs> does have quite a big impact on your performance, as far as I know, I'd, I'd leave it on Ultra or High. So... Now texture resolution, if uh, from the last video of my landing in Spain and departure, I had it on high, but I like I said, this is another setting I just switched to ultra, which in my next flight, I'm going to see how that affects my frames and what the difference in visual quality is. So like I said, I still do play around with my settings, but I had this on high in my previous videos. Um, so yeah, high is obviously also very, very good and works very well. Um, in exchange for high, obviously put this on 16, um, MT, anisotropic filtering. I had previously had it on 8, but for a while now I've had it on 16x because, yeah, no, the quality is just amazing. And this, I think, also does have quite a big performance impact, so I would just play around with the setting however you wish. Water waves, I've got on high. I think that's the max setting anyways. Ray trace shadows, oops, there. Ray trace shadows, ray trace shadows I have on because these actually make a massive direct impact and that is when you go into the outside view and you look at your aircraft from the outside if your shadow basically if you have this off your shadow will be very bad qual quality so the edges will be very blurry and uh, choppy and if you have this on your shadows will be nice and clear so that's if you want to take pictures let's say from the outside or screenshots this definitely needs to be on because otherwise your shadow will just look like garbage now if we go to shadow maps, I've got that on 2048, that's the max setting as far as I know. Terrain shadows at 1024. Both of this, I mean, this setting just looks absolutely amazing, works great. There's no need for me to really turn up terrain shadows up to 2048. Um, 
Now for contact shadows, I've got that on high. There's also ultra, but I keep it on high because there's honestly, in my opinion, no difference whatsoever. And you want to gain performance wherever you can, even if it's in the slightest. So like I said, this, I kind of went off of that guide, as I mentioned before, they've got screenshots there. And in my opinion, you really could not tell the difference. Windshield effects, I've also got on high, and that is also the next setting. Ambient occlusion on ultra, cube map reflections on 256, that is also the recommended setting in the guide. You can go up to 384, but in my opinion, no real need there. I could be wrong though, so please let me know. Uh, yeah, definitely. Like I said, feel free to comment down below what kind of settings you have or where your settings differentiate from mine, and if you have some tips as well. Ray matched reflections, I've got ultra, light shafts on ultra, depth of field, ultra, and now motion blur, I've got on ultra. This was what I talked about before, where I had that screen tearing when looking around the cockpit, which I still do slightly, but what drastically improved it was I had motion blur off. Now if you turn motion blur on, I'm not sure, I don't think this increases the strength of it, it just increases, increases the intensity or something like that, it could be the other way around. Anyways, if you turn on motion blur, that will definitely get rid of some of that tearing. So yeah, normally in all other types of games, I turn motion blur off, but in the flight sim, I definitely would keep motion blur on, and I have it on ultra. Glass cockpit refresh rate, also recommend just putting that on high. That is also the max setting, um, because other than that, your displays will start to get blurry. So I definitely would leave that there. Characters quality, now I'm not sure if character is an airport service quantity, if this is like the ground staff or this is. Now I don't use GSX, so yeah, this is just gonna be for the default sim. So if in, ca in this case, please let me know as well, what is what, if this is like the vehicles and this is the characters, if this is everything and this is just the characters in the cockpit for instance, which I have the co-pilot off anyways, but characters quantity I have on high as I, you know, since I don't use GSX, just having that ground crew walking around there does add a little bit. Characters variety on medium, don't need to see all the detail and variety in all the characters. Characters quality I have on ultra. Now here airport services quantity I also have on ultra because it does add a bit with all that service or all the airport services driving around. Um, the variety as well on ultra and now here the, for the parked aircraft quantity I have that all on off or low so on the lowest setting and turned off because like I said I fly on VATSIM which uses FSLTL so I don't need that um, and also for beyond ATC uses FSLTL so I don't use any of the default traffic injection and if you don't fly on VATSIM or use any of that AI ATC stuff I think you can still use an FSLTL traffic injector but I think that might actually just inject it into this stuff so then you would have to turn this on but I'm not sure anyways for my case since I fly on VATSIM and everything you want to turn all this off and here are just a low, off, yeah, low. Road traffic I've got high, sea traffic high, and fauna medium because I, yeah, I'm not really looking at animals when flying, so don't really care about that. Um, now if we go to camera, some other useful tips here. Here you can also change your default camera angle if you don't use the saved views or the custom views. You can adjust your camera position in the carpet here with this which I have tweaked a bit because in the default aircraft, sometimes you will look down and realize you're sitting slightly to the right or the left of the seat. So you can use this to change that. Now, if we go to advanced options, here's another useful tip for you to show you how you see all those YouTubers display this fancy FPS, like, I don't know what you call it, display window. What you do is you go to developer mode, debug, and display FPS. And then you see this window pop up here. Now you can see here, I've limited my frame rate in the Sim 274, so it keeps that steady frame rate there, which works very, very well. Because like I said, my computer, even if it outputs 130 FPS, I'm only really seeing 75, as that's what my monitor will output. And I've limited it to 74 to keep that stable frame rate. But yeah, then to turn it off, just click on it again and turn off developer mode. But that would be pretty much it, I think. Um, yeah, like I said, max frame rate, I would limit that in, uh, in your NVIDIA control panel and not really in the game. Um, other than that, yeah, pretty much most of the stuff's just set to ultra. 
and I still do play around with my settings every now and then. But yeah, I hope you could learn something from this. And like I said, I will leave a link to the uh, proper detailed uh, guide in the link below or in the description below. So please do check that out and use that to kind of help fine tune your settings however you wish. But uh, until then, like I said, thanks for checking out this video. I hope I could help you. Please comment down below uh, if you have any other suggestions or some differences you have in your settings. But I hope to see you again very, very soon on the channel. And until then, take care, stay safe, and happy landings.